Welcome back to Knowledge with Aleem, where we explore ideas that empower you to live a better life. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that is the cornerstone of personal and professional success. Discipline. You've probably heard the term thrown around in various contexts. But what does it really mean? Discipline is not just about control or restraint. It's about making consistent choices that align with your goals, even when it's difficult. It's the bridge between your aspirations and your achievements. And today, we're going to explore how to build that bridge. The two. Fear. Fees. Regret many people hesitate to lead a disciplined life because they're afraid. Afraid of failure, afraid of judgment, afraid of the unknown. But let's flip the script for a moment. What if the real thing to fear is regret? Imagine looking back on your life and realizing that you never truly lived up to your potential, all because you let fear hold you back. That's a far scarier thought than any temporary setback or failure. Regret has a much longer shelf life than fear. While fear is a momentary discomfort, regret can last a lifetime. It's the haunting, what could have been, that keeps you up at night. So, when you find yourself hesitating to take that first step towards discipline, ask yourself, what will I regret more? Trying and possibly failing or never trying at all. The answer to that question can be the catalyst that propels you into a life of discipline and fulfillment. Moral Obligation Some people think of discipline as a luxury, something that's nice to have but not essential. I'd like to challenge that notion. Discipline is not a luxury. It's a moral obligation. It's an obligation to yourself to be the best version of yourself that you can be. It's also an obligation to those around you. When you're disciplined, you're better equipped to contribute to your community, to be a better friend, a better parent, a better parent, a better partner, and a better citizen. Think about the ripple effects of your actions. When you're disciplined in your work, you produce better results, which can positively impact your team and your organization. When you're disciplined in your personal life, you set a positive example for your children, your friends, and your community. Discipline is not just about you. It's about how you fit into the larger ecosystem of human interactions. So, in a way, choosing a disciplined life is also choosing a life of greater impact and contribution. Setting achievable goals. One of the biggest mistakes people make when trying to become more disciplined is setting unrealistic goals. While it's great to aim high, it's also important to be realistic about what you can achieve. Setting unattainable goals only sets you up for failure and discouragement. Instead, aim for goals that are challenging yet achievable and break them down into smaller, manageable tasks. Each small achievement serves as a building block towards your larger goals. It's like climbing a mountain. You don't just leap to the top, you climb it one step at a time. Each step, no matter how small, brings you closer to the summit. And each step is a victory worth celebrating. So don't underestimate the power of small wins. They add up to big achievements. But what if you don't know what your goals should be? Start by asking yourself what you're passionate about, what you're good at, and what the world needs. The intersection of these three questions often reveals goals that are not only achievable, but also fulfilling. And when your goals are aligned with your passions and skills, discipline comes more naturally. The cost of inaction. One of the biggest obstacles to a disciplined life is the comfort zone. It's easy to stay where things are familiar and risk free. But what is the cost of such inaction? The cost is the life you could be living, the goals you could be achieving, and the person you could be achieving, and the person you could be achieving, and the person become. When you choose inaction, you're also choosing to forgo all the opportunities that come with stepping out of your comfort zone. You're essentially saying no to your own growth and potential. Think about it this way. 
Every day that you don't take action is a day that you can't get back. Time is the one resource that's non-renewable. While it's comfortable to stay in a familiar routine, it's also a way of letting life pass you by. The cost of inaction is not just measured in missed opportunities, but also in the erosion of your own potential. The longer you stay inactive, the harder it becomes to take that first step towards a disciplined life. Pursuing meaning over expediency living a disciplined life is not just about doing what's easy or expedient. It's about pursuing what's meaningful. You see, the easy path often leads to momentary pleasure, but it rarely leads to long-term fulfillment. On the other hand, the path of discipline, while challenging, leads to a life that's rich in meaning and purpose. It's the difference between eating a candy bar and having a nutritious meal. One gives you a quick sugar rush and the other nourishes your body. But how do you identify what's meaningful? It starts with self-awareness. Take some time to reflect on your values, your passions and your goals. What are the things that make you feel alive? What are the goals that make you want to jump out of bed in the morning? Once you identify these, you'll find that discipline becomes a lot easier. Because when you're working towards something that's meaningful, the sacrifices and challenges along the way seem trivial. Strategic planning when it comes to discipline. Planning is your best friend. A disciplined life doesn't happen by accident. It's the result of careful planning and execution. Think about it. You wouldn't build a house without a blueprint. So why would you build your life without a plan? A blueprint. So why would you build your life without a plan? Strategic plan helps you identify your goals, the steps needed to achieve them, and the resources you'll need along the way. But planning isn't just about creating a to-do list. It's about prioritizing your tasks based on their impact. It's about understanding the difference between what's urgent and what's important. Urgent tasks demand your immediate attention, but it's the important tasks, the ones aligned with your long-term goals that deserve your focus. So, as you plan your days, weeks, and months, make sure you're dedicating time to what's truly important. Moreover, a good plan is flexible. Life is unpredictable, and your plan should be able to adapt to unforeseen circumstances. Being disciplined doesn't mean being rigid. It means being committed to your goals, even if the path to those goals takes unexpected turns. So as you plan, leave room for adjustments, but stay committed to your end objectives. Self-assessment, self-assessment is the mirror that reflects your progress on the path of discipline. It's the process of periodically reviewing your goals, your actions, and your results. This is crucial because it's easy to veer off course when you're not regularly checking your direction. Think of it as the GPs for your life. It tells you when you're on track and recalibrates your route when you're not. Effective self-assessment involves more than just asking yourself if you're closer to your goals. It involves digging deep and asking tough questions. Are your actions aligned with your values? Are your daily habits contributing to or detracting from your goals? Are there external influences that are affecting your discipline? The answers to these questions can provide valuable insights into your journey. However, self-assessment is not an excuse for self-criticism. The goal is not to berate yourself for your shortcomings, but to understand them so you can improve. Approach self-assessment with a mindset of growth and curiosity not judgment and self-doubt. Remember, the goal of discipline is not to achieve perfection, but to make consistent progress. The power of routine routine is to discipline what a blueprint is to a building. It lays the foundation for your success. A well-structured routine creates a framework within which you can operate, making it easier to maintain discipline. It removes the need for constant decision making about the need for constant decision, making about when to do what, freeing up mental energy for more important tasks. But a routine isn't just about scheduling your day. 
It's about creating an environment that fosters discipline. This means setting up your workspace for productivity, preparing your meals in advance to avoid unhealthy eating, or even laying out your gym clothes the night before to encourage exercise. The easier you make it for yourself to stick to your routine, the more likely you are to maintain discipline. However, it's important to remember that a routine is not set in stone. Life happens, and there will be times when you'll need to deviate from your routine. That's okay. What's important is that you return to your routine as soon as possible. Consistency, not perfection, is the key to a disciplined life. Time management time is the currency of life, and how you manage it can make or break your journey towards a disciplined life. Effective time management isn't just about squeezing more tasks into your day. It's about prioritizing what truly matters and allocating time to those activities. It's about distinguishing between being busy and being productive. Many people fall into the trap of busy work. They fill their day with tasks that make them feel productive, but don't actually move the needle on their goals. This is where tools like the Eisenhower box can be incredibly useful. It helps you categorize tasks into four quadrants based on their urgency and importance, allowing you to focus on what truly matters. But remember, time management is not a one-size-fits-all concept. What works for someone else may not work for you. The key is to experiment with different techniques and tools until you find what fits your lifestyle and goals, whether it's the Pomodoro technique, time, blocking, or the two-minute rule. Find a method that helps you make the most of your time. 11. Accountability Accountability is the glue that holds your commitment to discipline. It's easy to make promises to yourself, but it's equally easy to break them when no one is watching. This is where accountability comes in, by making your goals and progress visible to someone else. You're more likely to stick to them. them. There are various ways to establish accountability. You could find an accountability partner, someone who shares similar goals and can help you stay on track. You could also make your goals public, perhaps by sharing them on social media or with a group of friends or family. The idea is to create a system where someone else is aware of your goals and can hold you to them. But accountability isn't just external, it's also internal. It's about developing a sense of responsibility towards yourself. After all, you're the one who has to live with the consequences of your actions or inactions. So, as you work towards your goals, regularly remind yourself why they're important to you and what's at stake if you don't achieve them. Pow 12. The role of failure. Failure is often seen as the enemy of discipline, but that's a short-sighted view. In reality, failure is a valuable teacher, a stepping stone on your path to success. When you fail, you learn what doesn't work, which is just as important as knowing what doesn't work, which is just as important as knowing what does. Failure provides you with the... You need to adjust your actions and make better decisions in the future, but the key to benefiting from failure is your mindset. If you see failure as a dead end, that's what it will become. But if you see it as a detour, an opportunity to learn and grow, you'll find that it enriches your journey towards discipline. The choice is yours. Remember, everyone fails. Even the most successful people have faced setbacks and disappointments. What sets them apart is not their ability to avoid failure, but their ability to learn from it, to get back up and to keep moving forward. So the next time you fail, don't ask yourself, what's wrong with me? Instead, ask, what can I learn from this? Ah. 13. Mental resilience. Mental resilience is the armor you wear on your journey towards discipline. It's what helps you withstand the setbacks, the failures, and the criticisms that will inevitably come your way. Resilience is not about avoiding difficulties. It's about facing them head on and coming out stronger on the other side. Building mental resilience starts with your mindset. Adopting a growth mindset, 
one that sees challenges as opportunities for growth can significantly improve your resilience. It's also important to develop coping strategies for when things go wrong. This could be anything from deep breathing, exercises to a go, to motivational quote, or even a support network you can rely on. But perhaps the most important aspect of mental resilience is self-compassion. Be kind to yourself, especially when you fail or make mistakes. Self-criticism may seem like a form of accountability, but it often does more harm than good. It demotivates you and can lead to a downward spiral of negativity. Self-compassion, on the other hand, helps you maintain a positive outlook and encourages you to keep striving for your goals. A 14. Long-term Vs. Short-term gratification. One of the biggest challenges in maintaining discipline is the constant tug of war between long-term and short-term gratification. It's the battle between eating a salad for long-term health benefits and a chocolate cake for immediate pleasure. It's the struggle between spending an evening working on your side, project for future financial freedom and binge, watching a TV series for instant relaxation. The choices you make in these moments define your level of discipline. Short-term gratification provides a quick hit of pleasure, but it's often fleeting and can even be detrimental in the long run. On the other hand, the rewards of long-term gratification are often greater and more enduring, but require patience, effort, and yes, discipline. The key is to find a balance. It's okay to indulge in short-term pleasures occasionally, but not at the expense of your long-term goals. One effective strategy to manage this is the if-then planning method. For example, if I finish my work project, then I can watch an episode of my favorite show. This way, you're not depriving yourself of short-term pleasures, but you're enjoying them as a reward for contributing to yours long-term goals. It's a win, win situation that reinforces discipline. 15, the role of habits. Habits are the building blocks of discipline. They're the small repeated actions that lead to big results over time. The power of habits lies in their ability to automate positive behaviors. Once a good habit is ingrained, it requires less effort and willpower to maintain freeing up mental energy for other tasks. But forming good habits is easier said than done. It requires consistency, patience, and a clear understanding of your why. The reason behind the habit, whether it's exercising to stay healthy, reading to gain knowledge, or meditating to reduce stress, your why will keep you committed when the initial excitement wears off. Breaking bad habits is the other side of this coin. It's not enough to form good habits. You also need to break the bad ones that are holding you back. The key to breaking bad habits is to replace them with positive ones. For example, if you have a habit of checking social media first thing in the morning, try replacing it with a quick workout or a reading session. Over time, the new habit will overwrite the old one helping you become more disciplined. Uh, 16. Self-improvement tools. In today's digital age, there are countless tools and apps designed to help you lead a more disciplined life. From habit, tracking apps to time management software, these tools can provide the external structure needed to complement your internal discipline. But remember, tools are only as effective as the person using them. They're not a substitute for discipline. They're a supplement to it. Some popular tools include habit. Tracking apps like Habitica, which gamifies your habits to make them more engaging. Or time management tools like Rescue Time, which tracks how you spend your time on your devices. There are also mindfulness apps like Headspace that can help you develop mental resilience. The key is to find tools that align with your goals and lifestyle, but beware of the paradox of choice. With so many tools available, it's easy to spend more time choosing and setting up tools than actually using them. 
So pick a few that resonate with you and stick with them. The goal is to simplify your path to discipline. The goal is to simplify your path to discipline, not complicate it. Ow. Oh, 17. Community and Discipline. Discipline doesn't have to be a solitary journey. In fact, surrounding yourself with a community of like-minded individuals can significantly boost your discipline. Whether it's a fitness group, a book club, or an online community dedicated to a shared goal, the collective energy and accountability can be incredibly motivating. Community provides a sense of belonging, a space where you're understood and supported. It's a place where you can share your struggles and victories, learn from others, and offer your own insights. The shared wisdom and experiences can provide valuable shortcuts on your journey towards discipline. But choose your community wisely. Not all communities are created equal, and some can be more toxic than supportive. Look for communities where members uplift each other, where the focus is on collective growth rather than individual competition. A strong community not only supports your current goals, but also inspires you to aim for new ones. Hmm, 18. Real life examples. Stories have the power to inspire, and real life examples of discipline can serve as valuable roadmaps for your own journey. Whether it's the story of an athlete who rose from poverty to become a world champion, or an entrepreneur who built a successful business against all odds, these stories show that discipline can overcome even the most challenging circumstances. But don't just look for stories in the headlines. You'll find inspiring examples of discipline all around you. It could be a friend who lost weight and regained their health through disciplined eating and exercise, or a family member who went back to school while working full-time to secure a, a better, better future. These everyday heroes prove that discipline is not the domain of the select few. It's accessible to anyone willing to put in the effort. However, while it's inspiring to learn from others, it's important to remember that your journey is your own. Use these stories as inspiration, not as templates. Your challenges, goals, and paths to discipline are unique to you, and that's okay. What matters is that you're making consistent progress, however small, in the direction of your goals. On 19. Common pitfalls. Even the most disciplined among us can fall into traps that hinder our progress. One common pitfall is the all or nothing mindset, where you believe that if you can't do something perfectly, it's not worth doing at all. This mindset can paralyze you, preventing you from taking the small, imperfect steps that lead to long-term success. Another common pitfall is procrastination. The act of delaying important tasks in favor of easier or more enjoyable ones. Procrastination is often a symptom of deeper issues, such as fear of failure, lack of self, confidence, or even unclear goals. Identifying and addressing the root cause can go a long way in overcoming this obstacle. Lastly, beware of discipline fatigue. Maintaining a high level of discipline over an extended period can be exhausting. It's important to schedule regular breaks or cheat days to recharge your willpower. Just make sure these breaks are planned and controlled, not impulsive reactions to stress or temptation. Now 20. Conclusion and Call to Action As we wrap up this deep dive into the power of discipline, I hope you've gained valuable insights and practical tips to help you on your journey. Remember, discipline is not a destination. It's a continuous journey of growth and improvement. It's the key that unlocks your potential and allows you to live a life of purpose, fulfillment, and impact. Thank you for joining me today on Knowledge with Aleem. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for more empowering content. And now, I'd love to hear from you. What are your biggest challenges in maintaining discipline? And how do you plan to overcome them? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.
and let's continue this important conversation. Until next time, remember, the best time to start your journey towards discipline is now. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Create it. Take that first step, however small, and keep moving forward. Your future self will thank you.